There we go. So, so we have an A sus2 to a D sus2 to an E major to an F sharp minor 11 to a B minor 7 to a C sharp minor 7 to a D sus2. Now, of course, with any of these, like these sus chords, you can always add the major third if you want to. Okay, but then think about this. So like the that's that's taking sort of those G shapes and raising it up a level and going, okay, cool. Now I can now I can do these in different places. Now what else can I do? Well, then you can also play E in a couple of other places that I like. Right now, you know, again, we're capoing and, and playing it right here as a D. But right, right here, we can play E all the way up here, which sounds really full. Okay, so that is the seventh fret. Okay, that's the same shape as our C sharp minor. So give that a try. See what you think about that. So for you, that's going to be the eighth fret since you're capable right. right there. Yeah. So that's really all that is is like a, uh, an E and a B, like E B E B E. So it's like a huge power chord, and you can strum every string. It sounds really nice and full. And then you can go down to the C sharp minor seven really easily so yeah and then you can go uh, down to the A sus2 by just leaving your fingers on the same strings right so use your use your, get used to using your pinky and ring yeah okay. yeah and going down to that C sharp minor seven a and then look you can leave this ring finger right here and you roll over and there's e just pick up your pinky and put down your index okay so you can so you can play e in two places so so that's kind of cool now and another thing you can do with a is if you don't want to play this a down here you can also play A right here. It's you don't. It looks like a regular A bar chord, but you can leave the B and E open, and it sounds really cool. Okay, so that's another way that you can play A and then to E. Okay. So, yeah, and then that, if we, if we were in the key of E, it'd work, because we could put this note right here, but we could, we could go up here for our B minor, but that, that throws in a bar. But anyway, it's real easy, because it's right there. C sharp minor 7, F sharp minor 11, E, A, D. So there's all sorts of different places that you can. All sorts of different places that you can play these just on acoustic to get some different voicings to make things sound a little bit cooler. Here's another kind of A that I play a lot, which is uh, an A, A string. And then I voice this, this is the fifth of A, so this is an E. And then I come up here and I, and I voice this B note. And that's called an A59. So there's another way to play A. And that's so are these two fingers on anything? Or did no, it just they're, they're, like I'm just using my pinky and index, so the middle okay. two fingers are on nothing. Okay. Yeah, and then you can strum all those. 
So again, C sharp minor seven, A five nine, B minor seven, E major, F sharp minor eleven, D sus two, D major, D sus four, and then we can add this. So it's kind of like a adding adding like another fifth there. It's like a power chord. So so again. There's so many ways already, and that's only just taking the capo off. Mm -hmm. So we haven't even talked about where we could put the capo um, to do something else and make it more interesting. But the important thing really is to remember this. Like you want to remember the, the key of G and the key of A, okay? The, the chords in those two keys. Because you tend to play there a lot. So it's worth memorizing. No, you don't have to memorize the key of B flat. You know, right. you don't play in B flat. I've got one student who sings in B flat all the time. So she has to do that. But, but I would say, ignore this up here. But I would say, you know, why not just memorize these chords they're they're in no specific order just a bunch right. of majors and minors but just memorize them so you can go oh cool i could play that song in a different place 